السلام علیکم آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دس نیو کورس آن فوٹو ولٹائک پاور پروسیسنگ سسٹم دس از اے نیو کورس ان وچ وی ول اسٹڈی ہاؤ دی فوٹو ولٹک ڈیوائسز آر انٹر کنیکٹ ٹو ڈفرنٹ کائنڈ آف لوڈس ویدر اٹ از اے گریڈ کنیکٹڈ لوڈ اور اے اسٹینڈ لون لوڈ ود بیٹری بینک اور اینی ریزسٹیو انڈکٹیو اور سارٹ آف اے ڈائنامک لوڈ So the main aim here is that we will start this course by going into the modeling of a photovoltaic cell and then to the module and array level. We will also study the effects of partial shading on the performance of a photovoltaic system. And then we will move on to the power conditioning for DC loads and then to the AC loads. In this particular course on photovoltaic power processing, we will also undergo the different kind of faults that may occur in a photovoltaic system uh, specifically the line to line faults and line to ground faults and the procedures and methods to detect identify and classify those faults so with this introduction let us start with the first lecture which will cover the basics of the photovoltaic industry how it emerged back to the 19th century and how the first commercial application was developed and thereafter we will uh, move on to the modeling of a photovoltaic system i would like to mention one thing that the intent of this course is to discuss a photovoltaic device based on a two terminal characteristics mostly uh, without undergoing deep into the designing of the pn junction and then the crystallization and the materials which are used to enhance the efficiency of a solar cell so for most of the times we uh, will only focus on how a photovoltaic device having two terminals or two leads coming out of the black box how they interact with the load based on the data sheet values of a photovoltaic panel and what kind of converter is suitable to connect them with any load application and how a photovoltaic panel if they are connected in a string and consequently into an array are affected by the presence of shadows on one or more number of cells so there are a couple of things that of interest so let us start uh, with the with the first class of power processing in photovoltaic system so pv system is a dc source in which the light falling on a pn junction is harnessed to generate electricity effect which is known as the photovoltaic effect was discovered in 1839 by a french whose name was alexander edmund becquerel so he discovered that in 1839 and the first commercial application that was seen came in the 1950s when the bell laboratories in usa developed solar photovoltaic uh, modules for space applications uh, related to uh, the united states of america then in bell laboratories developed solar cells for space applications over the last couple of decades the production of solar photovoltaic has seen a tremendous growth because of various advantages which are associated with the by this particular technology the first is that it is green and a renewable source it is it do not have any moving part which makes it a static device and thereby the technology is based on semiconductor materials and therefore it is free of any kind of noise which emerges or which is a quite a common problem thermal power plants and other uh, sort of a power plants so the second thing is that we have we have a semi uh, conductor or a solid state technology and therefore it is it is more reliable number 3 it has no moving part and therefore the operation is static and hence it is it is a noise free mechanism it 
it is highly modular and therefore it is flexible for various capacity uh, levels it is easy to set up compared to compared to the other technologies so basically for a photovoltaic system panels are automatically available so we create the balance of system that consists of the civil structure and the related uh, related mechanical structure it is easy to set up and which means that for uh, uh, that it is quite feasible for rural electrifications where we have limited number of houses uh, in a remote location and it is quite difficult for the utility to lay down special uh, you know arrangements or to arrange uh, or to make special provisions for the transmission and the distribution network to supply for those household so uh, it is it is uh, quite a feasible for remote area electrifications an uh, important point here is that the recent drive in the usage of photovoltaic technology is largely because of the increasing efficiency and because of the technological advancements in the manufacturing of photovoltaic panels and also because of the government incentives in the form of the feed in tariffs which has produced an enormous impact on the increasing utilization of photovoltaic system for uh, for uh, electrification purpose the cons of a photovoltaic system is that it still is not having a competitive energy density compared to the related or other renewable energy schemes like a wind turbine which comes in a size over 100 of kilowatt and it take the space uh, which is quite small compared to an equivalent amount of uh, power generating from a photovoltaic system so the first thing uh, is the lower power density compared to the compared to the wind power the number 2 is the and based on on this particular thing it is not common to use pv technology for moving platforms although there are certain examples where solar based vehicles in even the aircrafts are developed by companies like avb and schneider however the mass scale level of photovoltaic system or the or the mass usage of photovoltaic system is limited only to the stationary applications which are fixed and 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 they do not move like just like the uh, electric vehicles so this technology has this con and the number 3 is its price is although it has declined considerably but it is still high compared to the compared to the hydro and the and the thermal power plants so having said that the pv cell is the most basic form of or the most basic building block of a photovoltaic module which we purchase from the local vendor the cell is made by going through the process of melting doping metallization and texturing we will not go into the detail of how a solar photovoltaic cell is made but we will only study the photovoltaic cell to understand and model the pv cell using the electrical devices so that we can uh, based on that model we can develop an integrated system where the power processing tech, uh, stages are linked with the photovoltaic cell to simulate various characteristics of uh, of the of the pv power system so the pv cell it is the 
it is the basic form or the basic building block of a of a PV module. Individual cell has a very small capacity and therefore several cells are connected in series and in parallel to form a photovoltaic module. The PV cell modeling is important to to study the suitable power converters for PV applications. And we will shortly see that the photovoltaic cell exhibits a non-linear characteristics which are which requires some specific mechanism to operate at the optimal operating point. So, the PV cell is based on the manufacturing of various kind of materials which are not limited to only the silicon and the germanium and therefore different type of photovoltaic cells have different efficiencies. So, the common materials used for a PV cell are the number one is is the monocrystalline or we call it mono C crystalline cell. Then we have polycrystalline or we call it poly C silicon. Other than these monocrystalline and the polycrystalline, we have thin film cells which are made up of cadmium telluride. They are specific for the for the thin film technology. C D T E. Then another material has copper indium gallium selenide. Copper indium gallium selenide C I G S. Then we have the amorphous silicon. These materials have varying characteristics which are not only limited to the efficiency of these cells but also limited to the but also distinguish with respect to the shape and color of, of the photovoltaic uh, panel. For example, the monocrystalline usually has this type of a shape and they are black in color whereas this polycrystalline is square shaped with bluish color. We will shortly, uh, I will showcase these uh, to you as well. So, whatever kind of a photovoltaic cell is, the basic structure is something like this one. We have that we have on the top, we have this, this end layer and on the bottom we have the, we have this P layer and beneath, beneath this P layer we have the substrate and this one is the depletion layer. On top of that we have, we have various sort of the metallic strips which are connected to provide the negative side here and this P side is connected with the positive side. So, the output here is VPV. So, this silicon layer is doped from to form a PN junction and on top of that the side which is exposed to the sunlight there is a grid of metallic wires to collect the charges from which are uh, generated in in this particular uh, photovoltaic cell. So, we have this these are the metallic strips and the irradiation falls on on this side of the uh, of the photovoltaic uh, panel. So, what happened here is that this incident light which is measured in watt per meter square, it generate 
the charge carriers that result in an electric current if the cell output loads are short circuited so we should notice that only that the charges which are collected through this metallic strip they are only they only uh, they are only produced if the energy of the incident photons is sufficient to knock out the electron from the semiconductor material the depletion layer which is present here because this pn junction uh, is formed here so electron hole diffusion combined to form a depletion layer and this depletion layer creates a potential at the junction which is used or which is actually the reason to supply the current if the terminals are attached to any kind of load and hence a photovoltaic device is basically uh, is basically characterized by two important parameters the first one is the is the current source which is the photo current ih and the other one is represented by uh, to form uh, is 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 a diode that represents the pn junction which is uh, which is the backbone or which is the foundation of a of a solar cell this represents an ideal pv cell here so an ideal pv cell has a current source which is represented by an independent current source and in parallel to that we have a diode which represents the pn junction formed inside a photovoltaic panel so let us say that we have this current id here and this is the iph this is ipv and here we have we have this vpv then according to the itzhoff's current law this current source shall have a division of the current between this ipv and this id such that this ipv is equal to iph minus minus id now this iph the symbol shows that this is a constant current source dc constant current source and therefore this is attributed by a dc value if this is the voltage and this is the current it has a constant value uh, by uh, you know coming into the definition of a constant current source whereas this id this id it is based on the shockley diode equation right because this is a pn junction so whatever theory we have studied so far for a diode it is equally applicable on to this uh, uh, id as well which is the diode current and this is shown by something like this one so this is v and this is i so if you notice here this ipv is a subtraction of this current iph and uh, uh, the subtraction of this current id from this iph so if i point by point if i subtract these two from each other then the characteristic curve looks something like this one so this is the voltage v and this is the i so this is ipv and this is v this is vpv and if you see here this curve has a non linear uh, characteristics and it contains only one point where the maximum power is achieved now we will expand in the today's class a few important points about this iv characteristic curve and thereafter we will develop a model which is uh, a complete model incorporating the losses that are encountered in a in a practical uh, photovoltaic uh, cell so if i write down the equation of of this particular uh, curve then we have the ipv equals to the ipv cell or iph of the cell minus i not of a cell exponential of qv over a k t minus 1 where this iph cell is the current which is generated by the incident light so it is the photo current this i not cell is the reverse saturation current this q is the charge on electron this v is the voltage across this diode or voltage across the junction
this a is the diode ideality factor that is how closely this diode behaves like an ideal diode and the value of a is usually between 1 it is between 1 to 2 this k is the it's the boltzmann constant and t is the cell temperature or the junction temperature in kelvin in kelvin right now just to have a caution here i have seen certain research paper where the students have made some mistakes by by representing this ips with a dependent current source however by definition of the current source in the first course on electric circuits we cannot use a dependent source to model the photocurrent in a photovoltaic model because the dependent sources must be dependent on some other parameter inside the same circuit had it not be the case every voltage source be it a battery is actually a dependent source because some chemical process or some other process is going uh, to develop is is going on to develop the voltage uh, that represents uh, the uh, the voltage of a battery so therefore caution must be uh, made in developing the equivalent circuit of any kind of uh, device when it comes to the definitions of the linear circuit analysis so it is imperative or it is important to identify that the total current ipv which is coming out of this particular model is actually uh, 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 is actually a difference between the IPH and this ID and that IPH is represented by a constant uh, current source. This particular model that I have drawn is called as the as the ideal one diode model. There are several kind of PV models that exist in the literature and that are developed to catered various requirements of the researchers for example there are dynamic models available that contains the junction capacitances as part of this network we also have two diode model and three diode model which increase the complex complexity as well as the accuracy of a given model however this single diode model is considered most suitable for specifically for the introductory course on on pv and also it provides a good compromise between the accuracy and the a performance of of a given uh, pv cell model so we will stick with the one diode model of a photovoltaic cell and we will develop over it the model of a photovoltaic module now if i see this particular cell has a limited voltage for example maybe it is limited to 0.6 or 0.7 volt as an at an open circuit and at a short circuit it it is capable of supplying a few ampere of currents which is not you know enough to to cater for any loading application so what happened here is that several pv cells are connected in series and in parallel to make output power levels sufficient for for electrical loads right so when we combine various kind of cells then there comes the losses which are encountered due to the presence of the metallic grid which is which i have shown here so we have the metallic strips available here these strips have their own resistances also we have some of the losses that encountered because of the electron hole recombination in this depletion layer so not all the electrons which are knocked out of their shell by the incident light are used uh, by the load but there are losses and those losses must be incorporated in this ideal one diode model and that gives 
or that leads to the practical one diode model so the practical one diode model contains the resistances which represent the losses in harnessing the electrical energy from the from a photovoltaic module so for that we have this simple ideal model we will represent the electron hole recombination by a resistance which is rp and the contact resistance of the metallic grid through which we are collecting the electrons and supplying it to the load they are represented by a resistance rs here we have this ipv and here we have the we have this vpb this is vd this is id this is IPH and this is the IP. Now, if you see here, we have included two resistances. This RS is, uh, you know, the most simplified uh, representation of the losses in the wiring, and this RP represents the losses due to electron hole recombination in the pn junction so based on these two additional parameters the ideal model is now developed into a practical one diode model again if we see here if I apply now the Kirchhoff's current law at this particular node, then this IPV is equal to IPH minus ID minus minus this IP. So this IPH minus ID is equal to I naught exponential of QV over AKT minus one. To find out what is this IP. If we do know what is this VPV, then we can find out by adding this VPV with the drop across this RS and then dividing it by RP, RP. So it is actually this IP is equal to VD over RP and this VD is equal to VPV plus the drop across this resistance RS which is plus IPV into into this RS. So if I substitute it in here, then this is equal to minus VPV plus IPV into RS divided by the resistance R, this is RP, right? So this equation is now an equation which represents the behavior of a photovoltaic module, right? So we can further simplify this equation by assuming that this, let us say that Vt or the thermal temperature is the Ns Kt by Q. So if I assume this particular thing where Ns is the total number of cells which are connected to form a photovoltaic module, because this one diode model, it is for the, it is for the module. It is not for a, for a given cell. Rather, it represents the model of a PV module or a PV panel that we uh, that we see uh, uh, on uh, on various that we purchase from the market. So, based on this assumption, this IPV is equal to IPH minus I naught exponential of exponential of VPV plus IPV RS divided by AVT minus 1 minus VPV plus IPV RS divided by, divided by this RP. So, this equation of IPV is generally solved to draw the output characteristics of a photovoltaic module and this 
solution of this particular equation is not a trivial solution. So, several iterative methods and numerical analysis methods are utilized to find out the unknown parameters in, in this equation and that we will discuss in the next class. So, in the today's class we will focus on the important parameters which are visible or which are of interest in the IV characteristics of uh, IV characteristics of a given photovoltaic module. So, based on this particular equation, we have uh, we can we can draw a characteristic curve something like this one, and it is known as the IV characteristics of a of a PV module. Remember that the characteristics of a PV module are either shown by this IV curve or it can be shown by the PV curve as well or power versus the voltage curve that is of this type of a shape. So, here we have the P and here we have the we have the voltage. Occasionally for some application like the uh, triple correlation current amplicity system, occasionally sometimes sometimes we may opt for V i characteristics and the P i characteristics of a of a PV module as well. But for the understanding of the data sheet and for most of the applications almost all kind of applications the characteristic curves of a photovoltaic model are which are with the characteristic curves of a PV module which are used are this IV characteristics and the and the PV characteristics. Now, if you notice here this characteristic curve has three distinct points. The first one is the it is the known as the short circuit short circuit point. Here we have voltage equal to 0 and we have the current which is equal to the short circuit current of a given PV module. So, this is equal to 0 into ISC and we another we have another point where we do not have any power that is known as the open circuit open circuit module sorry this is known as the open circuit point in this open circuit point we have no current however the voltage of the module is there and then if we move along with this iv characteristic curve we come to know that under the under this particular point at this knee point we have the maximum area under under a given curve and therefore if we multiply the voltage which corresponds to this knee point with the front to the current at this knee point the maximum power is achieved and therefore this knee point is also termed as the maximum power point or the mpp so, the voltage here is V MP and the current here is the is the I MP. So, the first thing that comes in our mind is that a system if we want to harness maximum output electricity from a given photovoltaic panel, then the panel has to be operated or it has to be operated on the on this knee point which is known as the maximum power point. Because at these two points which are the short circuit point and the open circuit point, the power is equal to 0 because at the short circuit we do not have the voltage and at the open circuit we do not have the current. So, consequently the output power from a photovoltaic panel if you measure the voltage of a PV panel it will only give you the open circuit voltage which is of no use because you cannot harness any energy by operating the device at the open circuit. Same goes with the short circuit current which is although which is limited and it is always safe to short circuit a PV module. But this is also a point which gives you zero output power when a system is operated here. So, therefore, uh, these two points are of no use only the power at the maximum power point is, is uh, utilized efficiently. Other than that, these five points that we have discussed which is the number one is the is the short circuit point or the ISC value number 2 is the VOC value, number 3 is the is the VMP value, 
number 4 is the IMP value and based on the value of VMP and IMP the power PMP value these five values are usually specified by the manufacturer on the back side of the panel as well as on the data sheet of the panel side so we have the information about the about this particular uh, characteristic curve and now notice here that the data sheet which uh, of any pv module is designed at a specific testing condition so these values of any given photovoltaic module are only tested on an STC value which is 1000 watt per meter square at, at 25 degree centigrade uh, uh, temperature and at 1.5 atmospheric pressure. Now there are several uh, you know photovoltaic companies which nowadays also represents the variations in the irradiation and temperature and consequently their impact on the performance of a photovoltaic panel. But one thing is for sure that if we have a difference in the standard testing conditions then although there might not be a very visible difference in the shape of the photovoltaic curve but there are uh, different things which affects the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage. For example without you know going into the detail uh, which that uh, uh, because the detail I will cover it in the in the next class. If we have a decrement in the uh, in the incident light, then it directly impacts the impacts the amount of the output current which is available. So we have we may have this type of a curve for if this is for thousand watt per meter square irradiation, this might be for let us say eight hundred watt per meter square irradiation. Right. So, the lesser the amount of irradiation, the lesser the uh, short circuit current value is. Also, then the open circuit voltage is dependent on the temperature. Right now, in here, you see that the data sheet of any photovoltaic module contains these five parameters in general and three other parameters in particular, some of them, some of sometimes it is there and sometimes it is not there that is the thermal coefficient or the temperature coefficient of the VOC. So, VOC versus the temperature coefficient it is represented by KV and then the short circuit current with the temperature coefficient we call it this KI. These two parameters are also given in a standard data sheet. Now, one may ask that how these stiff environmental conditions are developed inside a laboratory because we do not have control on the environmental conditions. So, there is no field testing of the devices uh, to produce this important data from a from a data sheet. All of this is done by specified equipment that contains a dark chamber where the photovoltaic panel is laid down and on top of that we have for example, uh, we have let us say we have we have this type of a we have a dark room here right this is the dark room we have this dark room here and in here we have some arrangement where we where we put in our photovoltaic panel something like this one and on top of that we have the we have the incident we have the light available here this light source is very crucial because we want to develop that kind of a light which closely resembles the spectrum of the sunlight. So, special, special kind of electrical bulbs are used to emulate the actual behavior of or actual wavelengths of a sunlight. Obviously, it is not 100 percent possible. So, very close approximation of a sunlight is generated by using different technologies to produce this particular light and this light is not continuously turned on on this solar photovoltaic panel which is placed inside to measure the IV characteristics. So, we have sort of the uh, outputs available here uh, with the data acquisition system and uh, we have the 
uh, data acquisition system which plots and which records the IV characteristics of of the of the device which is under test. So this light source is used in in burst mode. So a light is varied in intensity to record the values of the IMPP, ISC, and VOC by having the electronic load connected with this data acquisition system. So we have we may have here we have the we have the load connected. So this load sweeps past the uh, the the uh, its 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 load such that we plot this type of a curve for uh, for a given environmental condition. And the technology has advanced so far that whatever is recorded in these type of chambers closely resembles the performance of a photovoltaic panel under the real environmental conditions as well. So a photovoltaic panel, uh, because it has only these few values available, so one may ask that how to actually quantify the performance of a of a PV cell, what kind of cell it is. So it is uh, it is quite a normal practice is to use a term which is known as the fill factor. Fill factor says that fill factor is actually a ratio of VMP into this IMP divided by VOC into, into IOC. And an ideal PV cell has a fill factor that is equal to that is equal to 1. So this fill factor tells us how good quality a particular solar cell is because we might have solar cell which which have these type of characteristics or these type of characteristics. So obviously if we have even if we have a, a higher VOC and the same amount of ISC if our panel has low value of the fill factor then uh, the maximum power point is considerably reduced and therefore this fill factor provides us a way to quantify the performance of a of a PV cell. So researchers have uh, done you know a lot of work uh, to enhance the fill factor and for that they do experimentation with various new kind of materials and other you know uh, manufacturing processes are advanced to enhance the fill factor of commercially available photovoltaic modules. Based on uh, this particular equation uh, of this particular model, uh, we just uh, we will wrap up this lecture after discussing the impact of the of the series cell of the series resistance and the shunt resistance on the characteristics of a of a photovoltaic uh, module. So we have this VPV, this is the IPV. Here we have this RP and this is the RS. So if this is the ideal characteristics of of a given photovoltaic panel. If we impact this RP, then this RP leaves an impact on this, uh, sorry. So if we draw the characteristic curve of a photovoltaic panel, this is IPV and this is, uh, this is the VPV and this is the IPV, then notice here that this contains two regions. The first one, we can say that this region is a constant current region where we can have a constant current is with uh, over a wide range of voltage values and on this side we have the constant voltage region and in between these two we have the constant power region. So if we have the two resistances in a given model of a photovoltaic system. Uh, talking about this one diode model of a PV, uh, PV panel, this RS has impact on the on the voltage region such that if we have an RS1 is this uh, resistance, if we increase this resistance then we have, we may not have an impact on the current region, but you can see the slope of this RS2 is different than the slope of this region RS1. Similarly, the RP, which is the resistance in parallel, it has an impact on the on the current region or the constant current region, such that we have we have this type of a this type of a 
occur for if for example this is this red one is the rs1 then this one is the rs2 uh, and this this one is the rs3 so here we have this rs1 is greater than this rs2 is greater than this r rs3 because lower the amount of this rp more is the current which is lost in the electron hole recombination near the pn junction and which is actually a loss so therefore choose the uh, constant current behavior of a photovoltaic module in here we have for this rs1 uh, for this r uh, sorry this is rp1 rp2 and rp3 this is p p and this p for this rs1 is less than this rs2 and is less than this r rs3 now so far what we have not discussed is how to solve this equation of the uh, practical photovoltaic module remember here in this equation we do not know the value of this diode identity factor a we have no information from the manufacturer as to what is this value of this rs and what is the value of the parallel resistance which is formed inside a inside a pv model these are three things other than this i not and this ith which is unknown and without knowing these values one cannot model a photovoltaic cell uh, for simulation purpose so this model that we have uh, you know studied uh, superficially in the today's class is having five unknowns that must be known before we can simulate it on any uh, software like matlab or simulink so in the next class we will discuss about how to solve this particular problem and what are the other models of a photovoltaic device which are developed by the researchers to enhance the accuracy of a pv model so till the next class thank you very much take care and allah hafiz